Charlotte Motor Speedway, Charlotte, North Carolina. Anything under 153 miles an hour is insignificant. The engines are turning up about 7,000 RPM for the four lap qualifying run, but they must be altered for the race. Mechanics adjust, drivers check. More than 6,800 will be too much. The engine will not last. For this one, endurance is every bit as important as speed. And as predictions of race day speed climb toward 150 miles an hour, handling assumes greater stature. That speed on a mile and a half track is approaching the edge. It prompts experimentation. star, holder of the NASCAR record for wins, is a favorite every time a flag drops. In an attempt to improve his car's reflexes, he has shifted to a smaller engine, less horsepower, but less weight too. The result is an unusual one for Petty. He qualifies fifth, a full two miles per hour off the record pace. The Petty team will have to make some drastic changes. Throughout the four days of qualifying and practice, the search for the delicate balance of speed and stamina goes on in the pits. Chassis are set, changed, changed again. The cars stick in the corners at cooler temperatures, begin to drift as the day warms. Weight is shifted, reshifted, gear ratios juggled, engines swapped. An engine's life in this game is only 800 miles or so. Hopefully, 600 of those come in one flat on Sunday. The race is run and won on the track, but it is constructed here by the builders and mechanics who have transformed stock car racing from a fairground free-for-all into a high science and one of the most exciting spectator sports going. The advent of factory support plus the application of skills acquired in years of small track racing have combined to produce among builders names that rival the popularity of drivers themselves. Men like Glenn Wood. Cotton Owens, Junior Johnson, Jack Sullivan, Bud Moore, and Ray Fox. Master craftsmen like these have had as large a part as any in producing the great spectaculars of modern racing, such as the World 600. As the week winds down, activity in the garage area behind the pits reaches a strained climax. Most crews have drawn a bead on what they think is the ideal setup. On race day, that which has taken weeks to prepare for will last a little more than four hours. Forty-four cars will start the race. Only a third will be running at the finish. The man who wins will pocket between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars for himself and his car owner. These are among the thoughts of those who will chase fortune around this track tomorrow. Now let's take time out for a word from your host, Falstaff Brewing Corporation. World 600 Day. A traditional smorgasbord of bands and entertainment spreads the front straightaway of Charlotte Motor Speedway. More than 75,000 fans have picked a perfect day for racing. The temperature will go into the 80s under windowpane skies. Excellent from nearly every viewpoint, except those who have seen proof that tire wear will be a great factor. On the infield grass in front of the grandstand, recognition for Fred Lorenzen, in whose honor the race is run. Ceremonies are climaxed as Art Hammerstrom, advertising manager of the Pure Oil Company, presents the retired star with a handsome portrait, taken while he was president of the Pure Darlington Record Club. Then Keo Diabro receives the Dizzy Dean Trophy as fastest qualifier. The award presented by Joe Harfush of the Falstaff Brewing Corporation and Linda Gale Mackey, Miss Sharp Motor Speedway. Then the time is at hand. The 44 drivers move their cars down the pit road for the parade lap. In front, Keo Diabro in a Ford, number 21. With Daryl Derringer, 26, another Ford on the outside. 
In the second row, David Pearson, board number 17 on the inside. Bobby Allison, number six, a Dodge, outside. The third row, Richard Petty in a Plymouth, 43. And Buddy Baker, Dodge, number three. Rounding out the first ten starters are Charlie Glotzbach, Sam McQuag, and Jim Pascoe. Behind the official car, the field accelerates, moving evenly and certainly toward the destiny beyond the starter's flag. The tumultuous climax of the week is now this moment. 